Every once in a while, I come across the perfect game. No, not the perfectly played game, but the perfectly instructive game. What you're about to see shows so many chess kid concepts all in one video, but before we get going with this little masterpiece, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also, before we get started, my apologies, because the chess Jedi, he goes down as black in this one, but I'm sure he doesn't mind being a chess teacher himself on Chess Kid that I show this instructive game. You're gonna have to know about the active king, fortresses, Zugzvan, even triangulation. There's probably some other ideas I haven't even thought of. Okay, let's get going. Now, James is black and his opponent is white and his opponent recognizes that this bishop is really bad versus the knight. And in fact, whenever you've got good versus bad piece, generally trading down helps highlight the goodness of your piece and the badness of the other piece. Apologies to my 12th grade English teacher. The first thing that white does is play queen to g5. Now this little tickle has a purpose. When black decides to defend the pawn with a very solid g6, notice that white has made black put even more pawns on light squares, which makes these dark squares Swiss cheese. Yeah, we've got some color weaknesses. That's gonna be important in just a minute. Now the queen first starts invading, but then the rook comes over and I guess white thought, you know what, knight to g5 maybe doesn't get me as much as I really want. So instead, white plays queen g5 to duck back out of there. Now a couple moves happen. I did mention that eventually white does want to trade because the more trades that happen, the more the knight is better than the bishop. So these trades happen, but white decides to keep the queens on the board. And I think that's a good decision. Otherwise, black actually might be able to set up a fortress. You need to keep a little bit on the board here. Okay, now, I did mention at the beginning, remember, king walk? Yeah, that was what we call foreshadowing, except I wasn't being very subtle. I was basically telling you it was going to happen. And just like Nigel Short did 30 years ago, this exact same path of the king is going to happen. It, it's all lined up. And remember how white made black play this move G6? Well, if the pawn was back on G7, the king may not be able to walk as far. Now, black does try to make some counterplay. I like this. Active defense. Hey, that's another chess kid video. Okay, king to G3, and then black plays the move pawn to B5. Now, white decides, I'm going to go ahead and offer a queen trade here. Hmm. And the reason is, white feels very confident that if the queens do trade, the king is going to get to a very active square, and then the knight's going to get to a square like this, and the king might get it even further. And white probably thought he had enough to win. Although, I must say, there is a chance black could hold a fortress with the queens trading. Certainly in hindsight, black might want to try to trade queens here. Although, it's not very fun to do fortresses sometimes. So. Black plays the move queen a3 because Jedis like to fight. Yeah, they like to use their lightsaber. So the lightsaber remains on the chessboard and the white king keeps coming. And now we had a big, big mistake by black. If the king keeps coming, if you at least keep your lightsaber on the board, you can start checking that king and, you know, harassing him and making life difficult. Black tried this move a4. I totally understand the idea. You are trying to make a breakthrough and create some counterplay, but look at this little blow pass. Yeah, pawn to b4 and uh oh, we have a trap piece situation. Now white can't exactly win that queen terribly easily because I don't know, the white knight would have to get to b9 without disturbing any of the defense of the pawns. But uh, what white is basically gonna do is just keep that queen over there just like, you know, keeping a dog in a cage kind of a thing. And this queen has no safe move. So black is almost playing down a queen. Now black realizes if this huh. king gets here and then the knight gets to a square like g5, then f7 falls and then, you know, white's king is just gonna play tic-tac-toe. Uh, maybe that's a bad reference. White king is gonna play domino. So the black king moves over to e7. Knight to e1 first. Okay, the knight is just repositioning to a slightly better square. He's going to invade here. But importantly, this queen still cannot move. That is the most important concept. Also, because the knight guards this pawn, white's queen could actually go to c2 if needed to try to invade down the c file. So white is adding that extra little element because he wants to make sure the black queen stays trapped. Okay, so king e7. But then white goes back to this original idea, king to g5. Now, if this king moves, then the white king achieves his dream of f6 the knight is probably coming into this square and there's not going to be a way for black to hold things together for example king over i get my king here knight c5 coming and i'm just going to take your bishop and then take every single one of your pawns and your queen amazingly still cannot move so going back to this position black decides to not move the king not give up control of f6 and play bishop c8 hmm. 
Now the knight comes into f4, which is probably its most threatening square. Threatening this pawn, threatening this pawn. If the bishop comes here, you could take it. I don't think you want to right away, but you could, okay? Bishop moves to e6, king h6. Okay, we're trying to achieve another very far advanced square. Now, this is a very funny position. I have shown you the video on triangulation, or maybe I haven't, which means you're not on chesskid.com, the website, which you should be. Now in triangulation, you intentionally waste a move. You basically make a triangle instead of moving into a square in one move. And to do that, you need to actually take the long way to get to a square. Now here's what it looks like in practice. If the king moves into this square, then black's king could come over and then your white king is stuck. What? Now if you're white, if you have any wasted move, you could turn it back to being Black's turn. Maybe actually this move F3 does not upset the apple cart and then Black has no moves. And if Black moves the bishop, you win the pawn. And if Black moves the king, then your king gets to F6 and Black has no other moves, right? This queen is still stuck after F3. Notice if you play G3, well, the queen actually could go to this weird square. Not that it does anything, but it just gives Black a move. So that's one way to get the job done. But what white did is white used triangulation. White played the king to h7. And then when black's king moved sideways, then this king moved over to g7. He actually triangulated, kind of makes a triangle, right? You kind of see it, okay? Uh, we don't usually see triangulation with queens on the board because the enemy queen usually like has a move. But this is just one of those really, really rare times where you use it almost in a middle game, but uh, black's queen just has no moves. Black's bishop has no moves. Black's pawns have no moves. Black's king, well, it could move, but when it does, then the king would move to this square and the bishop would be toast. And if the bishop moves, you lose this pawn, basically everything falls. So instead, black decided to move the bishop, but then, you know, knight takes pawn and everything starts falling. King to d8, and uh, maybe you could take more pawns, right? But anyway, queen to g5 check, and suddenly black's king is actually finding himself mated in a couple of moves. So sorry about that, Canty. I owe you dinner next time I see you, but you have taught us all a valuable lesson, a terribly interesting endgame, one that I hope you don't ever relive, but some lessons have been learned and that's what chess is all about.